Hey everybody, we just wanted to do a quick little tutorial, educational video on the mullein plant. We are located in northeastern Missouri and this plant is very common in this region, all the midwestern states really. I mean, you find it along the roadsides, in the pastures, it kind of grows everywhere. And it does very well. I mean, just on our little area of land here, 14 acres, I mean, there's there's probably millions of these plants. They are actually everywhere. So, just a little bit about it. It's first year that it grows. It's called a, a biannual plant. So it's it, it changes. It's first year it grows. It is just mainly a short bed of these fuzzy leaves and you can kind of see the hairs on the leaves and like I said it, it's short it maybe grows up four or five inches tall it's kind of a rosette style plant if you will the first year now the second year it will grow st taller <clears throat> excuse me and it will grow this tall stalk on it and this stalk can get I mean, eight to ten feet tall they get ginormous so this stalk is just a tall slender stalk with some of these smaller fuzzy leaves again going up it and then it will go into this tall stalk of nothing but flowers and you can see the start out of this one it's just got a couple small those little yellow flowers on it but the whole the whole stalk will be that way the the second year with these with these little flowers on them and it will continue to have the the leaves the regular leaves that it had the first year those continue into the second year now at the end of the cycle the second year after it it blooms with the flowers during the summer somewhere towards the late fall they'll start to die the whole plant itself will turn brown and I'll show you some pictures of those here in just a minute and the plant dies off and then as long as the root system is intact it will regrow so anytime we harvest any leaves or anything we try to leave the root system intact as much as we can unless we need to collect some root which we don't use that very often so typically we'll just harvest the leaves and the flowers so this plant has got a multitude of medicinal uses and i'm going to cover some of those with you really quick here um, the first one and one of the most common ones actually is making an oil out of these flowers so like I said during the second year the stalk gets covered in these little flowers so what you do is you just collect these flowers and you basically soak those flowers in an oil for a few days and after those few days you just kind of strain the flowers out of them and your oil is ready to use and the oil is typically used for things like earaches that's I mean that's one of the most common found uses anyway really super awesome to use on people that have earaches and you just put a couple drops of that in the ear and the earache is gone so on down to the leaves like I said these leaves have these really slight little hairs on let me try to get a good angle for you this one shows up really well. You can see just that light coating, super fine hairs, which if you have super sensitive skin, those hairs you might find mild, mildly irritating, but I mean, I, I don't notice it at all. It feels almost like a velvet. So these leaves can be used. You can collect those. And uh, one of the first things that people usually hear when they hear about mullein leaves is that they're used um, you can make a tea or you can actually dry the leaves out and smoke them just like you would a tobacco or something and it's super great for chest congestion so if you have you know you can feel all that junk on your lungs and you feel like you need to cough something up but you just can't quite get it this will make a great expect expectorant sorry so it will help you cough up all that the mucus and phlegm and stuff like that really great for people that have bronchitis asthma you know a lot of your pulmonary or lung conditions it's it's great um the leaves also have another use it's not quite as common as 
you know, the uses I just provided for you. But one of the other things you can do is you can soak them in just a, a warm water and you can lay, use them externally. Just lay them over your skin anywhere that you have some swelling, whether that swelling be um, underneath from your lymph no nodes, sorry, or just, you know, you sprained your ankle or whatever it may be. You have some swelling going on. You can just make make these leaves a little wet. Like I said, I use the warm water just because it's a little bit more soothing to the skin typically. And you just lay those leaves right over that area that is swollen. Now again, remember they do have those little tiny fine hairs like I was telling you about. So be careful if you have super sensitive skin. You might want to try just a little bit at first before you go slapping a bunch of leaves on your skin. Um, some of the other uses going down to the root if you do collect the root and harvest that some of the uses for that is you can make um, what they call a tincture and that is infusing some alcohol usually something like um, like Everclear or you know, something 90 proof at least you infuse your root in that and then you can just take it by a few drops and that is really good for arthritic type pains. They say it helps replace some of the synovial fluids in between your joints and that's what helps ease it. Of course, I don't know that for sure. I myself have not used it for that so I can attest to anything specifically. But here's just kind of down the, the stalk of your plant, the base of it. And of course, you're gonna wanna dig out around that a little bit when you do collect it. Sorry, I'm trying to get you a good picture here, but my son is not cooperating. You're going to want to dig it around that. There you go. So you don't damage the root, but you want to make sure you get the whole root intact. And just to kind of give you a general idea here, when we harvest the leaves, I will typically leave the closest ones to the center of the stalk. So I'd come up here. I'd collect these up here at the top. I'd take all these and then probably just these first few here, and then I'd leave those ones along the bottom. Now, you don't have to. Taking those probably isn't gonna ruin your entire plant by any means. You're not gonna kill it off by doing that, by taking all the leaves, but I just take a little, leave a little. I just like to take what I need, and no more than that, because I wanna make sure these plants continue to grow and we can continue to use them for our needs. Okay, so here is what I was talking about, um, the plant dying, the mullein plant dying after its second year, after it's done with the flowering, it kind of turns to this, which does not look nearly as pretty as the nice green fluffy fuzzy leaves and the pretty yellow flowers, but you know, I was telling you how long those stalks get with the flowers on them, that's kind of... I know you can't probably tell by this picture, but that's probably at least a good three, four foot tall, just that, just that section there above the leaves. Let me try to get a little bit closer. From like here up, that's where all the flowers would be. And then this mess here is, was the green fuzzy leaves. But this particular plant here is, oh, probably about six, seven foot tall. So they do get quite tall. And then I'm gonna scoot over here really quick and show you what one looks like in its first year. So this one here is a mullein plant, its first year of growing. And you know, I told you it was kind of like a like a rosette style type shape here. See how it kind of is more closed off in the middle and then it just kind of spreads and open, opens up. Here's some of the leaves out here. Huge leaves, I mean that one's almost the size of my hand. And then it just kind of curls up here more in the middle. But that, that is all you're gonna get. And that one, that one's short, it's probably about three inches tall. That's the first year. The second year is the big tall plant, gets flowers, turns to this in the fall. Okay, 